Welcome to Broke Ass to Badass by Best Life Ever with your host, Kimi Ann Pua. If you're ready to stop struggling, stop hustling, and start living your best life ever, you are in the right place. And wherever you're listening to this, be sure that you click subscribe so that you never miss an episode. We are so excited to interview an amazing person today named Kevin Koskela. Kevin is an online entrepreneur and digital nomad. He decided he wanted to be free of the corporate world when he lost his job after the dot-com bubble burst. With a history of competitive swimming, he returned to the water and started doing part-time work as a swim instructor and personal trainer. In 2005, he turned tri-swim coach his business teaching swimmers to become triathletes into a full-time location-independent online business. Today, Kevin works with entrepreneurs around what he teaches triathletes. You need experts so you can be the most successful. That's why in 2017, Kevin founded Work Hero, a service that helps online entrepreneurs by accomplishing their design and technical tasks so they have the freedom to focus on the work they do best. For a flat monthly fee, teams of experts focus on the annoying and technical tasks that business owners should not have to deal with. Without further ado, here's our interview with Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing great. And I feel like I already know you guys so well. So it's just really uh, a nice, nice way to start. Us too. We were like, it's so funny because as we were talking right before this interview, we had to keep stopping ourselves because we were just so excited to talk with you. We're like, hey, we better just <laughs> record this and, and start diving into the conversation because we just know it's going to be so valuable for everybody. So uh, I guess to give everyone a little bit of background, uh, tell us tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do in this world. I know that's a really big question, but uh, yeah, let's start there. What do you do? It's a huge question, but I, um, <laughs> but I like it because it allows me to be creative and answer it however I like, however I want, right? So yeah, so uh, I, uh, I want to start with where I came from before I did anything in business or career or any of that, because I think it's important. Um, so I grew up with the a really strong desire for freedom, like I think more than most people. I mean. I really wanted to be as free as I possibly could ever since I was a little kid. I absolutely hated school. It was so confining. And uh, that idea of sitting at a desk like all day and even just thinking about it now, I'm starting to feel like kind of gross. Um, And uh, (laughs) so and I was an okay student, but it just I never understood like what was like I, I never really understood why I didn't like school. I thought I should like it because everyone around me was like valuing it so much. Like, what grade did you get? And what, what's your GPA? And all that stuff, it never, it, it just didn't work for me at all. And I didn't care about it that much. Um, I wanted to learn. Like, I was excited about learning, but I never felt like I was really learning much in school. And so it, it was, it took me a long time to figure out that it actually wasn't, that isn't a bad thing to hate school. Like, I, I thought I was like just bad but then later I, I kind of found, you know, into my 20s and, and even like into my 30s, I was kind of learning about why I didn't like it. And that um, and that led me to kind of down this path. Like I did start with the corporate job and I, I went down to kind of a traditional path of, of my career and it just it was not a good fit. And it was, again, the same thing where I felt like going to an office every day and working for somebody for from eight to five or six or seven or whatever, it was just, it was just pretty miserable. Even when I liked my work, I felt very, uh, tracked in being in an office. And I felt like, is this what I have to do for the rest of my life? Like, this is terrible. So, um, so I started, I, I got laid off at one point and then I started thinking like, you know, I've always wanted to own my own business. So why don't I just do that now? Cause I'm not working. So I started doing just things like, that I could do. Like I started giving swim lessons because I loved swimming. I grew up as a swimmer and I loved the idea of helping people with their swim, with their like freestyle and all the strokes and everything. And so I just did that for fun. And it was like, it, it, I really loved it. I mean, of course the money wasn't amazing or anything, but I loved doing that. So I decided to, uh, and I was reading the books like rich dad, poor dad at that time. It was like the my transition from going going from an employee to being like kind of more self-employed 
because I was giving swim lessons, I started doing some personal training and I uh, was learning a lot through all of that. And But I, what, I, what I really wanted to do was have a business that I could be the leader of, but not be like, if I step, a, step away for a bit, it doesn't collapse. So that's where I started doing online business. And I, my first website was a, a site for my personal training business. And I was offering some online personal training. And so that was kind of my, my jump into online business. And I just absolutely loved it. I thought this is exactly what I was reading about in the rich dad book and, and some other sources that I had resources that I had at that time about a business that you can have and you don't have to be there to run it. Like you don't have to be at a physical location. And if you walk away, you can have someone else run things and all that. So it was, I was starting to get a glimpse of, okay, this is finally what I'm, what I want. Like I want this sort of uh, freedom oriented and uh, uh, it, uh, location independent lifestyle. So uh, stop me if you want to <laughs> ask anything or, or, or uh, go a different direction. No, this is perfect. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I, so then I, I was doing the swim lessons and I started, uh, I, I was like, I'm not making any money really very, very little money, but I thought about this whole online business thing and I thought, well, I could start something online. I was giving people swim lessons. Most of the people that were coming to me were triathletes, which is swim, bike, run. And a lot of people get interested in that when they get into their like adult years. Um, it's not really a kid's sport. It's something that people get into later because it's like, oh, I want to get fit. I think I'll sign up for this sprint triathlon. And so those were my, my, my swim students or clients. They were all triathletes. So then I thought, you know, what do triathletes need? And I came up with some ideas based on research, based on my own experience. And I started putting together like workouts for them to do. And so I, I, had, I had a website and I put up the workouts on my website as a PDF file and I had it for sale. And I, I didn't have much traffic. So I thought, well, I'll just see, you know, if I can see what happens, I'll just put this up. And lo and behold, I'm traveling. So I'm going to Europe and I didn't even check my email for like two or three days because I had no concept that anyone was going to buy this PDF that I put up. And I had, I checked my email and I had a sale. And unfortunately the guy that bought it, it didn't download right. So he didn't get it. He paid the money, like sent me the PayPal 15 bucks, I think. And he never got the file. So he's like furious, sending me like three or four emails, you know, like, I, like telling me that I'm a fraud and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh shit, this is not, this is not at all. Like, this is not cool. So, um, but I made the sale and I fixed it. Like I got on, I figured it out. I fixed it and I got that first sale. And that was absolutely like the most incredible feeling to, to make a sale when I'm flying to Europe or somewhere in Europe, traveling around, like not even paying attention. Um, so that got me the bug. And I, then I, I just took that site and I, I made it into a business. So at first it was just kind of like a side income where I was working part-time jobs. I was giving swim lessons. I was doing all these other things. And then I decided like, okay, I'm going to create a book. I'm going to make a book about swimming for triathlon. And then from there it, that turned into eventually a DVD. And then once DVDs kind of became uh, passe, then I uh, created a membership site. So that's where, that's what I'm doing today is I run the membership site for Tri Swim Coach, which is uh, a series of videos. So it's training, it's uh, stroke technique, and then it's uh, working on things like open water swimming. And then I have some bonuses like yoga and nutrition and things like that. Oh my gosh. I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm absolutely tripping out. Kimi, is this like Groundhog Day or what? Yes. <laughs> so... We just got off in an interview with a woman named Allie Boone, who is basically like the female version of you uh, in like so many ways. So she's in real estate and you can hear her episode um, really soon on our podcast. But you're going to trip out because she's all about freedom. She she really couldn't stand the confines of school, of people telling her that they, she needed to be good at all these things, of having the cushy corporate job, like the quote unquote dream job. She talked about, she even talked about Rich Dad, Poor Dad as mm -hmm. like the book that helped her to realize that this was all possible. It's just so crazy. So <laughs> I will keep this to myself and I will just freak out on the inside for a little bit longer. But it's so, it's so cool that the the vibe that we're putting out into the world is attracting people who value freedom and alignment as much as we do. So that's rad. 
thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and I, I really also am just tripping out that this feels like we're like having coffee with a friend and yet we had just met a few weeks ago. And that's really like, that is the beauty of this world that we live in and the online space that we're, that we're in where, you know, our vibes are very aligned and we actually are utilizing one of your services that you didn't even get to yet. So there's more juice coming. Um, <laughs> uh, and just, you know, the importance of really being authentic and letting people, your ideal clients, your tribe, come to you and fall in love with who you are as a person and then feel good about investing in your services or your products or whatever that is. So really, that was just a long winded. Thank you for being a badass. Yeah, yeah. Badass. I, you know, I, I, and I found you guys from iTunes. I was actually searching for I think it was Freedom Podcast. And I do that every once in a while just to see who's out there and if there's anyone I could connect with. And yours came up pretty high up there on iTunes. So you guys are doing something right. And uh, I, I started looking at your materials and your language, the way you describe things. And I'm like, oh, these guys are like exactly on par with what I'm doing. I mean, it was like a really great fit. So yeah, I was stoked when you actually returned my email and called me back and everything. So. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like there are people who actually read the emails that you send them. And we're so... <laughs> We're very proud to be two of those people. <laughs> so if yeah. you're out there listening and you want to reach out to us or Kevin, because Kevin is the exact same way. We know that from experience, like reach out to the people that you're inclined to, to reach out to. It works. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So tell us about Work Hero. You didn't even get to Work Hero. And, and this is a service that we're, we're using right now and are so excited about. So can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be? Yeah, absolutely. So I built up uh, my site, triswimcoach.com, with no technical knowledge at all. Um, I was really, really technically not savvy when I started it. And I also, um, I can't design to save my life. I couldn't, I can't even draw a stick figure. Like that's how bad I am at design. So I had to outsource a lot along the way. And there were times when it's, it was like, it was really a struggle where I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know, think I, I don't think I'm cut out for this. But the the way I got through those times was with hiring people that were experts in those areas. So and but it was a series of hiring different people and always kind of like, okay, I'll hire this person for this project, and then this other person for this other project, and then the then the first person goes away and I can't find them. And I'm like, I was always like struggling to find the right people, the right person for each thing. And so it was a couple of years ago, I was at this traffic and conversion conference. It's, it's a big marketing, internet marketing conference here in San Diego. They have it every year. And I, they were talking about um, the whole idea of setting up a digital marketing agency. And I was kind of looking at that and I'm like, that, that sounds kind of cool, like helping people with their business in all different aspects. But most of the agencies out there were very expensive. Like if, if I were to use an agency, it just didn't make any sense. Like all the ones I looked at were, they're like, oh yeah, um, we could do your social media. That's um, like 10,000 a month would be the basic. And I'm like 10,000 a month. Like I, I don't even make that. Like that's, that's crazy. So I got the inspiration to, I was like, well, I could start something like this and charge much less with the kind of the experience I've had with outsourcing people and teams and things like that. So I, that was my original thought was I want to do a, a marketing agency that is um, for the digital nomad, like kind of the solo entrepreneur type people that don't have the 10 grand a month or whatever it is to spend on each part of their, you know, each department. So that was my original plan. But then I, I kind of narrowed it down because I thought, well, starting something like that is just huge. Like that would be way too much. So I narrowed it down to the stuff that I'm not good at, the technical and design parts of the business. And so that's what it turned into. So I, I started work here last year and um, with the idea that I was going to help people that had done similar things to me, like are starting on a path of doing the things that, that I've done, which, you know, and but, but with hiring us or with using us, it would be much easier because they could skip that step of having to go through all the things that I did with, the, with outsourcing and, you know, having all the uh, failed uh, hires that didn't work out and and all the wasted time and money and energy and all that. So, so that's where that's how Work Hero started. So we do uh, technical and design tasks for people. It's a monthly service. So you sign up and you get unlimited tasks. And we just work in WordPress. Uh, so and then and then we can but we can do as many tasks as you have for us. We do them one at a time. 
for a monthly fee. And then uh, we have different departments. So we have the, the technical team and then we have the design team and we call them heroes. And so when you join us, you will get assigned, depending on what your tasks are or your task is, you will get assigned to a hero and then you'll work with them for whatever that is. And you can have both design and technical. It doesn't matter. You can mix it up and you'll have different heroes assigned to you. And um, yeah, so that's the, that's the kind of the way it works. And yeah, I'm, I'm super excited that you guys are, are uh, part of it and using the service right now. We absolutely love, love, love your heroes. And, you know, it's it's cool from a technical standpoint, from a service standpoint to create something so accessible for people and really uh, give people uh, the bridge to get to where they want to go and to achieve their big dreams and not need some of the technical stuff that keeps entrepreneurs stuck. It is such a beautiful service in that way and really gives people, uh, again, the freedom to do what they love without feeling like they have to be good at all of the things. So, you know, thank you so much for creating this for our our global community of entrepreneurs Um, and what you've done so amazingly like I don't even know if you know just how epic this is <laughs> but your people are so much more than good at the the technical stuff they are they're friendly they're approachable they're kind they make us feel good about ourselves like no 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 you didn't totally screw this up and <laughs> uh you know it's not your fault and we're gonna fix it like we got your back and it, it I just from a human standpoint, I'd love to chat about what your process is. How do you seek out your talent? What's your, uh, I mean, you don't have to tell us like the whole interview process, but like, what do you do to recognize the hearts in these people? Because you've done a fantastic job. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that feedback. And it's great to hear because I don't really get to talk with a lot of our customers. So it's like, yeah, that's, this is really great feedback. Um, yeah. So it, it really comes to understanding what to look for when you're hiring somebody. It's not, there's not some complicated process. In fact, I am much, I'm not much of an interviewer. <laughs> like I don't really spend a lot of time on interviews. I will just uh, exchange a few emails to set up the interview and then get people on uh, Skype chat and I get a feel for it. And it's really, I just mostly go by feeling. Um, the, the, my core team is that they're people that I talk to all the time. So we're, we're either chatting on Slack or on, uh, we do, we do a lot of zoom calls and stuff like that. So we do actually talk quite a bit. Um, but a lot of the heroes, yeah, I just, I, I just go with the feeling and, and that's the main thing. I mean, they are, you know, i obviously they're qualified and all that, but that doesn't like, there's a lot of qualified people out there and, but to find that right fit that they're going to be, like you said, like personable and welcoming and understanding and all that. Like, I think that's more of a feel, a feeling than it is like, can I interview for all these things? Like, I don't know. I mean, I think it's just uh, you, you just hire people. And this is what I've done with Trisum Coach as well Is like when I need to hire somebody, I pretty much have the thought that I'm going to hire them based on their personality, based on how they come across and if it doesn't work out, then we, I figure, I let them go and figure something else out. But most of the time it does. So that, that t- tends to work. I love that answer. <laughs> it's so <laughs> great. And, and we're big believers in, yeah, kind of trusting our gut, trusting what feels right. And so love it, love it, love it so much. So <laughs> when it comes to outsourcing, <laughs> and this is something that we're always working on ourselves, we definitely coach on outsourcing, but when it comes to like eating our own dog food, <laughs> this is something <laughs> that we're working on. So, um, you know, when it comes to outsourcing, what do you think the biggest challenges are that people run into and where they, you know, where do they kind of get stuck, I would say? And do you have any advice if somebody is like, God, they kind of feel like they're ready to start outsourcing some of their tasks, especially, you know, the, the tech and design stuff? Where do you advise that people start? I think that people struggle with the idea of hiring somebody, you know, that's not maybe not in the U.S. Like if you're in the U.S., you might think, well, I don't know how I'm going to get the quality of work that I'm that I could get here and the possible language and cultural barriers that present themselves. And, uh, you know, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week was a great book, but he also put out his thing back then. This is over 10 years old now, that book. 
uh, his thing was hiring these people from India. And so everybody at that time, I think back in like 2007, 2008, everybody's like, oh, we got to hire people in India. And that gave, that gave so many people the idea. And so not to say there aren't great people in India, but the cultural difference is huge. Anybody that's worked with uh, Indian developers, programmers, uh, design, you know, any, anything there, there is a big cultural difference. And they, they usually speak, a lot of them speak pretty good English, but the differences are, are, are so big that it can screw up an entire project because you didn't understand something because they, they understood it differently than what you were saying. And so um, that, that's a big one there. And then I think a lot of people got so frustrated that they just said, screw it, I'm just going to pay for American developers or American workers. And um, I think that's a huge mistake because there are so many places that you can outsource um, with sites like Upwork.com. You can find people all over the world that are amazing. And it's surprising how good English is in some parts of the world. And even to the point of understanding like, our way of like the American slang and things like that. Like people in, I have people in Serbia that are like, they, they, they say the same thing. Like they have the same expressions as America. I'm like, how is that even possible? But that's, you know, that's one thing that is it, once you get, once you hire your first person and, and sort of get to work with them, I think that fear and that, you know, um, yeah, the, the idea that something's going to go wrong, that'll, that'll kind of go away. So yeah, I would say, you know, it's just a matter of getting used to it, uh, talking to a lot of people and then finding the right person or people that are going to work for you. And, you know, I have people in the Philippines right now and that's a great place to go. But, you know, to, to, to just say that any, you know, just go to the Philippines and hire somebody that they're going to be awesome is not, not the case. Cause there's just like anywhere else, there's all different levels. So you really have to talk to, you know, people and, and find out like get a feel for them and really figure out, is this somebody that you can work with? So, but yeah, I mean, I think there's, uh, you can get so much done with someone in the Philippines versus, you know, it's like if someone's, if you're paying somebody three, $4 an hour in the Philippines, that's a really nice wage over there. And you could find that person be equivalent to someone that's making 60, 70,000 a year doing the same job here. So there's a, there's a lot that, that you can do there. For sure. It's, it seems like the Philippines are the, it's like the, the India of 2018 where it's just a trend. We've heard so many people outsourcing to the Philippines and we have a huge Filipino community here in Hawaii. And it's true. I mean, people will travel to Hawaii to get, uh, you know, American wage to easily and joyfully support their families back in the Philippines. And that, the, the quality of life that we can provide to somebody by outsourcing to someone in another country is really thinking about it in that way actually makes outsourcing feel really good all around. Um, and it's so funny, like I, Kimi and I both did semester at sea when we were in college separately. Um, but Kimi, wouldn't you agree? Like traveling around the world really, or at least for me, like it made me feel sad and stupid almost that Americans don't, really put much effort into learning other languages mm -hmm. generally and everybody every country out there children were speaking like they they could speak like three or four languages fluently and everyone would speak english and so i mean there is there is that sort of uh, level of american ignorance but on the on the flip side it's true that you can find very talented people who speak english who can communicate perfectly all over the world. So it's such a cool place that or cool time that we live in for sure. Oh yeah. I am for sure. so not asking questions. I think about that too, is I, I go to places where it, like in Europe or the people know like four or five languages and I'm like, I know one and I know like a tiny bit of Spanish and that's right. it. And like, I feel so dumb. But the thing is like when you live, it's really depends on where you grew up. It, it all comes down to that. Cause people will say, Oh, Americans are just lazy and ignorant, but it's like, we just ha didn't have the, there was no really motivation to learn other languages because we're not bordered by anything. You know, we have Mexico, but you go down to Mexico and people speak English. So it's like, there's no incentive to really go out there and learn. Whereas in Europe, like traveling, you could travel through four or five different countries. It's like going through States here. So it's like, a, it's, a, it's such a different, it's such a different feel, but that's why another topic. <laughs> <laughs> 
such a good call because I even here in Hawaii, a lot of people will choose to learn Japanese, which doesn't make much sense in terms of you know business or practicality in many other places. But there are so many Japanese tourists and visitors and travelers who come through Hawaii that to get into the travel industry management, you know that kind of thing. It's it's imperative that you speak Japanese here. So you're right; it depends where you grow up for sure. Can we ask a question? Uh, <laughs> ask okay. Question. Well, uh, I love it. I do. I do have more. They're probably I can just talk too. They're probably. Yeah. Talk I have a lot travel. of. Yeah, I have a lot of like self-serving questions. So we'll just d- start digging into yeah. those. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to to outsourcing, I think that one place that people often get stuck is that they're in that place of like, okay, their business is expanding. They find themselves doing a lot of little tasks that are taking up a lot of time. It's taking them away from their unique brilliance. Like they know, like something is shifting, they need support, but they kind of don't know where to start. And it's almost like, like we'll often coach Perhaps. people. Friend. To yeah, asking for a friend, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> but we'll of, often even coach our clients, right, to like take a step back and write down even like what you do in a day, just to like start to get a sense because we do feel when we're in the weeds, like we are the ones that have to do everything, right? That like you know yeah. this is just we've been doing something in this way and for such a long time. So, do you have any tips for people of like how they can begin to identify? Well, what are the easiest things to outsource or like methods that they can use to start creating some standard operating procedures that they could like then shift on over to a team or a VA or a service like yours? Like where, where should people start if they're like, I need help, but I don't know how to get the help that I need. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just answered a lot of them right there. <laughs> all, all those, those are, those are great answers. Actually, the, the, I, I would start with thinking about how much you feel like you're worth you know, are you worth $3 an hour or are you thinking more like $100 an hour? Like what's the kind of value that you're bringing? And then what is it that you want to be working on? What what are the things that you like to do? Because if you just do things like a whole bunch of different things in your business, you're going to burn out. Like it's it's not going to take very long before you burn out and you just want to quit. So you have to figure out what is it that you like to do. For me, that's writing. I really love writing. And so I made it a couple of years ago when I was kind of doing a little more than I should I, I made sure that I was right. Like writing was the main thing that I would do every single day. And I like that. So if you can sort of take the, the things that are like my, for me, the first thing that I outsourced was the things that are very administrative. I think that was, that's a great place to start because nobody needs to be answering every email. And it sounds like you guys have quite a few emails as well, <laughs> but uh, it, that's something that you can easily hire somebody that has a lot of experience doing that and it's not going to cost you very much. So I would say take the, the customer service and the support emails and, and things like that and get that off your plate. And that's that's super easy to do. And, and you'll feel like, OK, I lifted that like I have this like breathing room, you know, after you got rid of that. And then from there, it becomes it becomes much easier because, like you said, you can do things like SOPs, like the standard operating procedures. And and that's you only have to do it once. I mean, yeah, you may have to revise it later, but you really only have to do one SOP and then you know exactly what you what needs to be done there. And then you can teach somebody how to do it and then it's done. You never have to do it again because the the problem with continuing to do these things yourself that other people could do is that it feels like you're not wasting time. It feels like, well, I only it only takes me 10 minutes a day to do this. But then that turns into, you know, you, when you start adding it up, that's like an hour a week. And then it, at the end of the month, you're, you're spending an extra four hours doing this thing that you feel like, oh, it's just it's just 10 or 15 minutes a day. No big deal. So that it's easy for that stuff to get away from you. And so, yeah, documenting all the things that you do in your business and then creating the SOPs and then finding somebody to outsource to, I think is. Is, is the way to go. You know, that that brings to mind, uh, I, I kind of feel like your heroes ha- are training us too. They're teaching us as we go. Yes. And mm-hmm. one of the, one of your wonderful heroes had asked us so gently and kindly, I may add, like, you know, we tried to explain something and he said, you know, do you th- would you be okay with just doing a little screen share video and sending it back explaining what you mean? And that was 
is so, so much easier than trying to type out and write it. And I think that's a really great place for people to start too, is to, you know, do these little screen share recordings. I forget the, what the software was that he recommended, but yeah, it's, it's called loom. It's yeah. a great piece of software. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. And that was like, that was a total, like that blew our minds in that moment. Cause it was like, oh yeah, like part of the resistance that comes up for people, especially for us is like, oh, it's going to take longer to explain it than to do it. But that's typically because we're trying to explain it in the written word. And yeah, that right. can take a long time. But if you just do a quick like, hey, here's what I got going on. Do you think you could help me with this? Boom. It's like, right. wow, that is that was a real game changer for us. So yeah, thank you. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and thank yeah. you for putting that into like some like tangible numbers that really shifted my thinking because we've really been shifting our practices lately, as you know, with the growth of our business and having to take some things off of our plates. I'm a big, like, I always am coming from the place of, oh, it's just easier and faster to do it myself. It doesn't take me that long. And I never once, well, I don't know if that's true, but it doesn't feel like I have, like, sat down and thought, like, this thing that I spend probably more than 10 minutes a month on takes up so much of my time, like, collectively. So thank you. You probably just saved us a lot of time. Awesome. <laughs> Glad I could <laughs> help. I, yay, of course. Oh my God, you're helping so much. Um, and I, I do want to ask, so once somebody kind of has this outsourcing thing all dialed in, they're feeling really good about it. And, and you have also full-time employees. And so I'm wondering at what point would you say that you would consider hiring someone full-time versus outsourcing to a freelancer? Right. So I actually don't have any full-time employees. Um, oh. Yeah. So it's, it, uh, I, the, the people on the team are either working like with me as like kind of partners or they are contractors and they're part-time contractors. So what we do is we start them off hourly and then move them into like something that's like 15 to 20 hours a week. So, and, and that, that way, um, they can, so, so the idea of work hero is that they also have freedom. Now, if somebody wanted to be full-time and we had the hours, we would gladly give that to them. But right now we don't have the need for somebody to go like, let's say 40 hours a week. So, um, but the idea is that everybody works from home. Like we don't have an office. We have uh, a remote team, uh, our team is spread out. And, and right now it's just, uh, it's US, Brazil and Philippines, but I'd really like to get a couple of people in Eastern Europe so that we have all the time zones covered. Um, but as far as, uh, yeah, as far as hiring uh, somebody full time, it just really depends on what you need. Like for, you know, for work here, we don't right now, we don't need the full time thing, but you can find good people like going back to the Philippines, you know, um, and, you know, pay them 40 for 40 hours a month or 40 hours a week and get them for like 300, 400 dollars and have them doing all, you know, several different things. Um, you know, usually that's going to be like an admin, but but that's that could cover a lot of things that you do automatically. And then you have the the uh, benefit of getting to know that person. So you're you're sort of like they're on your team They're You, you know, kind of how they work. They know how you work. And so that's it, that can be a really nice um, thing to have as well. Got it. All right. Wow. I, I feel like I have more I want to ask you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So just in the interest of getting to know you better, because you have created this like, you know, really amazing life of freedom for yourself. You have the best Twitter handle too, by the way, freedom love and guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's well, awesome. Thanks. But so, so what does a life of freedom look like for you? I think it's so cool that we're having this conversation because what you're really doing for people is sharing this like world of possibility for people that may not even know that this type of existence is possible. Although I figure if they're listening to our podcast, they probably have some idea. But what does having an online business, having a, you know, support like Work Hero in your life, what does that do for you? And what does your daily life look like? Yeah. Um, so it, it, I get asked about this a lot because my podcast is Freedom Lovin'. So what does freedom exactly mean and how does that apply and how do I uh, bring that into my life? Um, so you know, going back to the whole Rich Dad thing, like 
it, it's not that that book is so amazing. I mean, now it, that book is like 20 years old and it's like obvious, it's kind of obvious to a lot of people now. But the idea is, you know, his basic idea was that running a business means that you can walk away from that business and have it still generate profits without you there and not having miss a beat. Like you could walk away for six months, a year, and you come back to it and it's still, it's still going and it's still like the same as where you left it. And maybe even getting better because you could be like a um, bottleneck in your own company. So I, that idea to me is that's how, that's how my life needs to run. Like I, I don't like the idea of trading time for money because then it's just an endless treadmill and you can't really, it's hard to really get ahead. And um, and then also like, what is the point of having all this money if you don't have time? So that's the key to me is, is having time, having much more time than, you know, than, than the money that I, that I need. So, um, for me, I, so I travel a lot and I'm able to take my laptop with me and still work on the road. And so that's a really important thing to me is to be able to, to travel and get out there and see the world while I'm still working. And I don't really care about going on vacation. Um, I actually like to work when I travel. So those are, and you know, it's fine to separate things and like I can go off and do things for a couple of days and not check my uh, email. But at the same time, I still like to have, be coming back to something that I'm working on because it gives me a lot of fulfillment. But yeah, so my I define freedom as not having any unchosen positive obligations. So not feeling like at any in any part of my life, whether that is uh, work or uh, where I live or my relationships, like no part, none of those I want to be feel like I am obligated, like I have to do this or there's trouble. So I always want to be doing like, I always, I always want it to be my choice to do whatever it is that, that I'm looking to, that I want to do. And so once, I think once that you can grasp that idea of, of always choosing, always having the freedom to choose, then, uh, life becomes much better because you can start going towards what you really want as opposed to, okay, I got to make money. I got to make some, I got to make enough money to pay my rent and to buy enough food. And because when you're doing that, life is just not that fun. It's not that interesting and it gets boring and it's like, it, I, you know, you turn into sort of a drone. And so I, I just don't, I can't ever see myself doing that kind of thing. And so I, I think that no matter what, for me, no matter how bad things could ever get financially, I would just find ways to free myself in, in, in any other way. So for example, like I live in an expensive city. It's probably not as expensive as Hawaii, but San Diego, you know, it's like one of the most expensive cities. Um, if I couldn't afford it, I would just live in Thailand or <laughs> just go to Thailand because it's way cheaper there and it's super nice and fun. So, um, you know, there's, that's a good way to just go back and say, okay, I got to rebuild. And, um, and this is what one, one other thing to add here. There's the people get so excited about making tons and tons and tons of money. And you hear a lot of podcasts where they'll talk about like, oh, we have a seven figure earner here or an eight figure or this or that or whatever. And, um, it sounds, it sounds nice, but I am always more curious about what's their lifestyle like. Like if someone's earning seven figures, but they're just working all the time in an office on their business, that doesn't really sound like freedom to me. That sounds like you're kind of chained to that business and you have to make it work. And there's, uh, there's a lot of downside to that. But if somebody is completely free and they can do whatever they want and they're not making a ton of money, but they're, but they're able to travel around the world, then that's, that's fascinating to me. That's like, okay, you're doing what you want and you're, you're excited about life and you're getting to travel around. Like what else is there? Totally. Wow. We've talked to a lot of rebels today who just don't like being told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think you're so right. Like the freedom of choice, like choice is freedom. And, and I think there's this like wide, massive misconception that we are ever stuck anywhere. Like not having a choice is just total bullshit. You can always choose. You're never stuck. And it's the people who can see that that's bullshit and take action to change their circumstance are the people who allow themselves to live a life of freedom and choice. And so thank you for being one of those people and inspiring anyone listening to this to do the same because it's really valuable. And if more people 
were to take action on the things that they want and not necessarily quitting their job. Like, I think we need to start making that clear that our entire goal in life is not to have everyone quit quit jobs that they don't hate. But if you do hate your job or if there is a part of your life that you feel stuck or uncomfortable or unhappy in, like change it because you you can. And some yeah. things are harder to change than others, but nothing's impossible. No, I love what you're saying because I it was something else that I was thinking about too that it, it ties in with this. There's a book that I mentioned on a few podcasts that I read like two years ago. It's called The Power of Broke and it's by uh, Damon yeah. Johns. He was on, yeah, he was on the Shark Tank. And, and that book, I, I was like, it's so huge because that's that's where you, everything gets started. It's like when your back's against the wall, it's not when you get to a certain point. It's like it's when you start out broke, when you really start making things happen. And that's the I think that is the exciting point. That's why somebody was asking me a while back. They're like, well, what if you lost everything? Like you lost your business, your money, your everything you own. And what, how would you feel? And I'd be like, I, you know, it sounds crazy, but I'm like. I kind of would, well, at first it would be a disappointment, but then I would be like, it's kind of exciting. I got to start over. And, and like getting to that point, I think is, is so important with this that you have to love what you're doing. You have to like, at least like what you're doing and, um, and getting that starting point is not, it's not a bad place to be, to be, to be broke. And if something fails, like you start something and it fails, that's not a bad place to be at all. I think that's a, that's a great point. Wow. It's a challenge, but there's also like being wealthy is also a great place to be. Like there's, we also are really fighting that stigma of having money is, it's bad to want to be rich. And, you know, we just talked to someone who said this so eloquently and beautifully. And I mean that I'm not even being sarcastic, but he said, yeah, of course there are rich assholes, assholes out there. But for the most part, like having money doesn't make you actually hundred percent of the time having money doesn't make you a bad person. Cause you're probably an asshole either way. Like the rich people who are assholes, we just hear about them more because they're more exposed maybe. But it's it, it's so powerful to let money free you and not be the only thing that can free you. But it can it's something that you deserve if that's what you want and to not feel guilty about that. Because so many people, especially in our industry, we work with a lot of heart-led entrepreneurs and, and people with these services to make people, to make their lives better, to make the world better. And they don't want to be compensated because they feel like it's just a good thing to do for the world when they don't realize they could serve more and live better and be a great example for their family if they could also allow that abundance to come to them. Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, have you ever have you ever had somebody work for you that uh, was like an intern or somebody that you weren't paying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how does that work? I mean, how long it doesn't really they... work? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's where like running a business and, and uh, bringing uh, like change to the world, like positive change to the world. It's essential that you charge money for that because that's that sh that shows the the value. And I yeah, I, when people say that, they're like. Yeah, well, I don't want to charge for this. And it's like, but then that means you're not valuing what you're offering, and then no one else will value it either. So it won't even it won't change anything if you don't if you don't want to make the money. Yes, for sure. Wow, this has been such a wonderful conversation. I don't want it to end. You know, I get yeah. like I get butterflies in my stomach thinking about somebody listening to this being like. I'm going to move to Thailand, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like just that whole possibility of like the choice, the power of choice in any moment. And I, I so love the, it's like that, that beautiful desire to grow and to expand and yes, to charge what you're worth, but also, you know, you really bring up that like releasing the fear of losing it too. And I think that is, that's the dance, right? Of like creating this beautiful thing, but not gripping to it so hard that you make bad decisions. And so, um, yeah, well, wow, this has been a really deep and wonderful conversation. And I just know that people are going to want to find out more about you and connect with you. So where can they do that? Sure. I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm really disappointed that I did not hear birds in the background this time. Every time we've had a call, I've heard the birds and I just picture this total <laughs> oh, tropical I'll paradise. Oh, I'll unmute myself. They're definitely here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's such a great sound. Um, yeah, so uh, you can go to useworkhero.com is the website and Kevin at useworkhero.com and uh, I'm on you know Facebook and 
And I, I'm a little bit on Twitter, but I don't check it that much. And, and then uh, Instagram and all that too. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to include all of that in the show notes. And we're so excited to be connected with you and all of your amazing heroes at Work Heroes. So thank you for the work you're doing in the world. And yeah, we look forward to staying in touch. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I, I look forward to also working together. And thanks again so much for having me on the show. I really love your guys' podcast and your, your whole message. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. As always, we can continue the conversation in our tribe on Facebook. You can find that at bit.ly slash VLE tribe. If you guys are ready to take action and level up your life and your business, jump on the phone with us and book a breakthrough call. You can find out all about our eight-week course and all of the ways that we support you and your business dreams at brokeass2badass.com.